piping system susceptible to vibration, AIB and FIB. We know that there are different excitation mechanisms that can cause piping vibration. This piping vibration may lead to induced fatigue due, due to the vibration and finally even to the failure of the system. Historically, some mechanisms have been considered as two-phase flow, reciprocating pump, compressor, etc. But nowadays, in the recent days, uh, it's been more demanded other source of vibration, what we call AIB, acoustical induced vibration, and FIB, flow induced vibration. What I mean more demanded is by the engineering companies, by especially, but especially by the end users or the owners of the plants. Main companies as Saranco, Gasco, etc., they are requiring in their standards and specifications to perform some verifications related with this mechanism of vibration. Okay. The topics we are going to review with, during this seminar, we will introduce the vibration-induced fatigue, failure in piping systems, and then we will talk about both mechanisms, AIV and FIV. For both uh, mechanisms, we will introduce them, explain the purpose of the, and the scope of the study that can be done, the, the general methodology, assessment process, explain with more detail, and finally, some mitigation actions or additional recommendations. To finalize, we will briefly compare both, both systems, let's see. Vibration-induced fatigue failure in piping. Traditionally, piping systems have been designed on a basis of static analysis with little or even no attention to vibration-induced fatigue and in general to dynamic analysis. Only some main or complex systems are subject to, to dynamic analysis. The vibration-induced fatigue failures are a major concern due to the associated issues or concerns with this, with this mechanism. The safety of the plant, the production downtime, the corrective action cost, the cost of the actions, and any environmental impact, of course. If you found some leakage associated to, to these cracks, all these issues are of concern. There are several factors we have to, uh, to increase the incidence of these, of these issues, of vibration-induced fatigue failures, which are the most significant. Increased flow rates, so we try to improve, to get more production of the same plants, maybe running at, at higher rates than that they originally designed, as a result of the bottlenecking studies to improve the, the production of the existing plants, relaxation of the erosion velocity limits that we established at good engineering practice, we are increasing these velocities. And finally, we get higher flows and higher turbulence and energy in the process lines. Also, another factor has been the higher resistant materials. When we use higher resistant materials, we use thinner wall pipe. It's more flexible, but it's more subject to these, to these mechanisms more sensitive to this type of fatigue failure due to vibration. The sequence of a failure caused by this vibration-induced fatigue is the vibration caused dynamic stress cycles. These stress cycles could initiate the process of a fatigue crack. If we don't check, correct, or take any action for these cycles and this fatigue, finally, we could lead to a thickness fracture, a subsequent rupture of the, of the piping. Basically, we will focus in this, in this document. Of course, there are many approaches to work um, with vibration, but what happened with the Energy Institute? They published these, these guidelines, this document called Guidelines for the Avoidance of Vibration, sorry for the presentation, Vibration Induced Fatigue Failure in Process Pipe Work. This is the second edition, 2008. The first one was in the 99 year. This document addresses FIB and AIB among other sources of vibration, as the water hammers, lag flow, or whatever, but we will focus in these two, two mechanisms. 